Yes! Yes! So here we have a very interesting battery to me. It's for a pallet lifter, Heli, Heli truck pallet lifter. I don't really know if it's a big or small model, but this one looks very similar to electric moped batteries we've seen before. And we also recognize this sticker. So it's gonna be fun seeing what's inside. And they're also using this type of uh, auto switch as a fuse and on no switch so and they have uh, Anderson here also common on um, many moped batteries and I recognize these QC warranty labels and here we have just made in China a lot of info in Chinese high voltage yeah we're talking about 24 volt here guys so watch your fingers Let's see oh what a nice little charger Nice but bulky, cool. And they have this Anderson SP50 with the holders. You can easily just remove it a lot easier. Nice. Let's see if there's anything on the charger. Spider webs in there. <laughs> and it has one LED to power them all. Well, on the end also has an indicator. Nothing is working. Have a look inside. Okay, nice. It's drawing power directly from the discharging port. So this one needs to be working and on if this is to work. And it doesn't look to be too much padding or silicone, so we can probably just slide this out. Oh, I'm just gonna be feeling if there's anything sticky. There might be some adhesive in the bottom. Oh, no? Oh no. That's a double-sided piece of adhesive that is rolled up on its side. But I think it's kind of loose. Anyway, getting these kind of batteries out is <laughs> not impossible but you, there really is nothing you can do there's nothing to pull on you don't want to pull on these wires Let's see if I can create the MacGyver handle here we can see the BMS under here best way BMS oh and that failed because it was too short You want gravity to do the work for you, but there's <laughs> not much you can do. So, I really don't like this wire jumping around. What we usually do is we cut off the heat ring tubing and hope that the battery is not um, having a lot of silicone on the bottom. Since the BMS, BMS is on top, we can actually do some service, and some measuring. And I can see it's cylindrical cells, light green, so no brand, no known brand. Oh, that's a pretty hefty BMS. I can also see the green cells. Of course, it could be Panasonic. I have no idea.
Here we can measure battery negative. Let's go for the positive inside the silicon wire and battery negative 24.5 that's actually pretty good so I'm guessing a dead cell group or maybe this one is dead let's measure discharging wire same hole here we're at 24.1 so why are we getting zero voltage red usually means on in this situa situation 24 24.1 okay 24.1 but actual incoming voltage is 24.4 meaning the bms is turned off and we can see that since the voltage difference if the bms is on the voltage here is the same so now i'm guessing a dead or low cell group Yeah, I really want this Moruts Kaka gone. I actually bought non-metallic tweezers a while back that I can do my poking with. <laughs> shouldn't poke with metallic stuff around the BMS. I know where exactly every wire is, but it's good to have an option for those unknown batteries. But a 2.54 millimeter GST pitch is no match for me. I know every nook and cranny of this connector and it will open up. Oh, I can do this since it's a tweezer, nice. <laughs> I haven't even tested if it's non-metallic or non-conductive, but <clears throat> there is a rim here. We can usually get a good grip. Uh, usually. Or the edges. There we go. And this one is too short to measure with my meter. And it also has two missing pins. Let's see, what do we have? We have three plus five, and it's seven as lithium. Here we are more exact, 24.48. 4. 4. Come on. There we have zero. And that's because there's no pin in there. Then we jump. And we have pins in both of them, and um, it's difficult to measure. Let's see what the millivolt. And here we get an exact number. It's actually 384 millivolts. We remove it. I don't know if you can zero this out. I don't like that it's never zero. But here we can see a constant 389 millivolts. So that's the problem. Oh, sorry. And then we have four. Then we have four. And four. And 
and four. So this we can fix, but only by replacing all the cells. Of course, we can balance the low cell, but one, there is a big risk. We should never ever try to balance up unless it's one single cell. So we would need to take the whole battery pack apart, test every one of these individual cells and see if every one of them can hold handle voltage and want to increase the voltage and then put it back together and that would cost more than to build a new battery pack. And we don't even know what brand cells there are. Now, let's see if we can get this out now. Because I'm guessing there's some adhesive in the bottom. Making us look like fools. Really want to cut the corners. Technical term. I wonder why it's called cutting corners. That's actually an excellent method for taking out batteries out of metallic boxes that do not want to come out. So we can also have a little feel around the battery with a non-conductive metallic thingy and just see if there's any adhesive how far down the EVA foam goes that's the sticky one that's upside down Can't, might be able to Yeah, let's get a larger, longer piece. And here we have one that can reach the bottom. And if it's silicone on the edges, you can cut with these ones as well. It's a lot of pressure. One thing you could do is have clamps putting pressure on both sides. Here we have a lot of good margins. You can have pressure here and relieve some of the pressure. And that can make it easier to slide out. But with the still, the problem is in the bottom, if they have adhesive or silicone in the bottom, <laughs> it's gonna be tricky getting this out. I'm just feeling a little bit, try to get that grip off how much pressure it is. Yeah, I'm gonna get a clamp. Yeah, I'm not gonna get anything done while the wires are like this. And there's no really good way. But since the battery is dead, not dead, but has dead cells, I'm gonna cut this connector off. I'm gonna cut it at different lengths so nothing can happen. Ja. 
there. You can see it bulging up. Let me show you another one of my tricks. There are actually some things to hold on to, like these strips. Yes, go so on. Show. Let's feel around a little bit. Now we have good clearance here. There are some Eva foam on the sides. We have really good clearance to the bottom on the sides to maybe loosen up a little bit. See, it's loose, you can pull it forward and backward and that's good. You can also pull on the plastic. Let's remove them. I don't know if they were helping, but now it's I want gravity to do most of the work, but One thing you could also do is take like tantrod, nail, nail wire and try and get it behind the corners down there and like grind it together. Um, we won't try that, that's <laughs> humiliating. If we know if it was double sided adhesive, we could add heat and that might loosen it up a little bit. But since we have never opened this before and can't see inside, and since it's metallic, it will heat up pretty much and take a lot of time to cool down. And we don't want the cells to start bubbling. What we can do is remove the BMS and have 
better access to the edges so let's see it looks like it has just yes, tape surrounding it let's just cut not corners, but close. BMS is unpowered, so there's not really much going on there. Here's a good job for the tweezers. So, oh. and it's, what are these called? I don't really know, but I've seen them many times. 2,500 milliamp per hour shiny cells. Mm, nice connection here. Now we actually have enough room to Grab onto the plate on this side, and that is gonna be a game changer because if we, we can wiggle it back and forth, then we have a chance. I feel like I'm giving birth to Satan's babies. Hopefully there will be no fire. So we can try and just take the yellow casing and maybe we can pull out just the battery pack. And leave the heat ring tubing. But if it were built like in the top side, then the adhesive is on the actual battery pack and no nothing in the bottom.
I might need a glove to do this better. Need to hear a nice sound like a little baby crying in here. So soon we will have our baby, I hope. We need an extra glove for battery grip. this one up to max power we actually have our strong man over here um, <laughs> who lifts weights and uh, competes and that sort of things but he's not coming in today so I will have to show you how strong I am Almost see the head pulling out here. I think it's a boy. We don't wanna pull out just the yellow ones leaving the pack in the middle. We want everything to come with us and this one is starting to loosen up. So Yeah, we lost one of its fingers.
Now we can actually try and pull on this negative bus bar because we have good have a good grip and it's pretty strong. I think this is a bit slippery, but uh, yeah. We lost my ear. Okay, it goes from there. I'm gonna do a lot of things. As you can see the head. And One of those crouch cameras. Oh, I tore, tore, tore off some nickel. But we still have some limbs to pull on. Let's just... No, that's the loose one. That one is also getting loose. You can see how ridiculous this is. I have almost a centimeter of eagle room. Okay, there went the other bus bar.
We have no grip over there. We don't want to yank on these anymore since we're coming loose. Just have the last piece of this. And that's gone as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Just cut off the negative one. Maybe we can tag a little bit over here. My own little game. Tag of war. Here we can also Usually cannot pull on the cell holders because they will just crack. Yeah. Loosen up a bit. I'm calling it. It's the negative terminal, so there's really nothing gonna touch anyway yeah I've done my best usually I do not yeah no that's not my blood it's glue other methods including filling these up with weed E40 <laughs> uh, but that does not always work or heat it up beneath but I, I do really don't know if it's double-sided adhesive or silicone <sighs> okay one more try and this is the only part where I can tug since I can reach the nickel on both sides and prevent the plastic from going ahead well just feels so loose Maybe if I also touch the double sided adhesive, which is connected to the battery, let's just remove the nickel. There we 
there we have it good grip yes yes oh. Oh. yeah <laughs> yeah well almost impossible a blob of silicone connected to that fiber glass oh that that's impossible. Oh, but I did it. I did it. Oh. And without harming the battery pack, and even if I were to slide these yellow ones out, they were heating tubing and bubbly on all sides. Ooh. Look at all these cells. Here we have the bus part. Pretty well built actually. Nothing to complain about except for using shiny cells, which might be the reason one cell group is died. You never know for sure. We'll see how many P do we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven. 28 in, in, in two groups 28 so that's 14 P 14 P yeah if we were to build it we would build um, um, we will do two cells less Yeah, we would probably do 11p going up here, a lot simpler. And then we have a lot of space for bus bars on both sides. And it's nine, so we would have a lot of margin, higher capacity. We don't know how many amps this one is pulling. And since we had a look at the BMS, we can see, oh, there's a label underneath. Of course we can reuse the BMS but we want to do better. It looks like 50 amp. Come on best way label don't fail. Okay but we can clearly see it says 50 all amps and we also have 7s 50 amps here in the model number in the same port for charging or discharging and here for some reason they just attach one wire one of the holes and a lot of MOSFETs and a temp sensor so we can definitely do this and you can replace everything it's a nightmare getting it out I wouldn't recommend it unless your life depended on it but I would like to try every battery at least once yeah so let's tell the customer the good news because I'm guessing a new battery is like uh, in the thousand euro range or something.